Anyway, okay. so, yo, Julie, you want to talk about UFC? Because it happened this weekend. There was a pretty big matchup. Um, I don't know if you want to break down the fight. Because I saw, I just saw, I didn't see the whole lineup. I just saw the end fight. So uh, what were your thoughts this weekend on you? Was it 258, 259? 258. Yeah, I actually missed that fight because I had some other stuff come up, but I ended up watching like a recap and I I watched a good chunk of it illegally, but um, then I watched the highlight. I I pretty I pretty much knew what happened. Feds are are watching. (laughs) The feds are watching. But basically, what happened was um, so Usman pretty much lost the the first round. He was getting Gilbert Burns put up put up some work, and mind you, Gilbert Burns is he's no slump. Like this guy. He was legit. He was the number one contender. He earned his way up through. He was a beast. He's a freak of nature. But, I mean, Kamaru Usman is just – the dude's on another level. I mean, you look at him and he's just like this guy is like a physical specimen. It's like how is this even possible? Um, so, yeah, he lost the first round. Uh, he got rocked. Uh, but Gilbert Burns kind of held back a little bit. He should have kept on pushing him and pushing him. But I guess – I don't know. He was playing it too safe in my opinion. Um, and then the second round came and then it was just over. Like Kamar Usman just kept on just pushing him and pounding him and just outstriking him. Like surprisingly too, because Usman is like a world class wrestler and that's usually like his go to, but he stood up with him. He just kept on rocking him and rocking him. And then he came to the third round and he put him on his ass with his uh his uh, his right jab, I believe. And, um, yeah, he kept – and then Gilbert Burns fell down. He kept on ground and pounding him, and then eventually Herb Dean had to stop the fight. But it was it was good. It was um, – Didn't they used to be, like, fighting partners or something? Yeah, so they were actually yeah. teammates. Um, teammates but, yeah. yeah, they were teammates. They trained in the same uh, gym for, for years. Wow. But they, they just recently, because of the fight, you know, they split up and everything. But um, this just kind of established that Kamar Usman is like he's going to go down as one of the greatest. He's already he's just passed George St. Pierre for the most consecutive welterweight wins. He has a 13 fight win streak in the UFC at welterweight and he has a 17 win streak in total. He's 18 and one right now. So, I mean, passing 13 straight UFC victories in the welterweight, just passing George St. Pierre, which is one of the greatest like. You're putting yourself up there to probably be the best welterweight of all time. And he's cleaned house. I mean, he's beat everybody. He's beat uh, Tyron Woodley. He's beat uh, uh, Colby. Uh, oh, my God. Covington. 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 Colby Covington. He's beat uh, Jorge Masvidal. Now he's beat Gilbert Burns. Barely. Barely beat Jorge. Well, I don't know if you saw. Did you see at the uh, at the end he called him out? Yeah, yeah. He called I, out I saw thing on Twitter because they were like, "Oh, I'm ready," and he's like, "Oh, you ready?" But I'm hungry or some shit. I don't know. He said some shit on Twitter. Um, but yeah, I, I think I was most disappointed in this fight. Uh, for no, Uzman. did you see him speak you though? Like, nah, did you see? I, him? Didn't, I didn't see the speech. I didn't see the speech. Yo, he I like call- shit off, man. No, he he called him out. He was like, because and that takes some shit, dude. Because think about it. He's he had. He has no place to call anybody out because it's like he doesn't need to. He's the champ. Yeah. He's beaten everybody. And then he calls out a guy that he beat. And I was like, damn, who calls out who who calls out somebody that you beat already and you're the champ? Usually it's some like up and coming guy calling somebody out. Yeah. Step on somebody while they're down already. It's like But yeah. Because like, apparently well, because apparently uh Jorge Mazadal is talking shit because you know, oh, I only had like a week to prepare for this fight and so on. And then Usman was like, no, fuck that. I was fight again. Like, I'm not going to let like sit here and let you come up with excuses. It's like the only reason why you took that fight was a cop out. So you can. So if you lost, you couldn't talk shit like because it's no. Well, he did. He's he like, did he, and then, favor. He, he, he was he, like, he didn't find a match for him because he, you know, uh, Masvidal didn't favor for him. Like if he didn't fight, if he had a point, no, fight, but, he doesn't get paid. Yeah, but right. Masvidal was talking about the only reason why I lost is because I didn't have a full training camp, and so Usman was Which like, "No, true. get a full training camp." That's yeah, fact. but uh, yeah, but let's not be let's be real. Like Masvidal has been training that whole time. He wasn't maybe a hundred percent sure that he was going to be fighting, but you don't just take a fight last minute without you. He was training for the possibility of something happening. And that's what Usman was saying, which I agree with. All those fighters, they, they always have backup fighters. They're always, like, ready. There's, they always got a guy ready, especially during the, the COVID yeah. situation. And um, so, so, like, 
I, I just thought I was like, damn, yeah, respect. Like, I like that he called somebody out even though he had, he didn't need to because he's a champ and he already beat him. He's like, no, nah, take a whole fucking full training camp. I'll still beat your ass. And <laughs> Which is good because you know what? That last fight, all Usman did was stomp on his feet and fucking use his shoulders to punch him in the face. And he, it was a stomping match, and it was the most boring <laughs> fight ever. <laughs> so, yeah, you beat Masvidal on six days, and you're stomping his feet. And, like, <laughs> that was a boring fight. It was boring. So <laughs> now, now that we see Usman can stand up and punch, why don't you stand up and punch with a stand-up fighter, which is fucking Masvidal. Masvidal I mean, I, I like Masvidal, but like I think stylistically, I don't think he can handle Usman. Usman's too big. Because Masvidal fought at 155. There's no way in hell Kamar Usman can even get down to 155. He probably struggles getting to 175. Like, the dude's a tank. Like, there's, like, I think stylistically, like, I... I think he's calling out Masvidal because obviously that's a bigger ticket fight. Um, so I was looking into like, and I was watching some people talk about this and Daniel Cormier was talking about this, that they might be thinking that his next fight is either going to be him in Covington two or him in Masvidal two. So, I mean, I think he wants Masvidal. Obviously that's going to be like, yeah. that's going to sell the most, but yeah. So what do you think? Cause they were talking about Masvidal, you know, Obviously, his last fight, he lost to you on six days, whatever. And it was like, you know, Masvidal, I think uh, for a little while, I don't know if he, uh, I think I remember hearing him saying, like, he wanted to concede, like, he wanted to fight somebody else to get back to the top. Like, he felt like he needed another fight to earn his way back up. But do you think, what do you think, I don't know, you know more the, you know, the opponents that are out there um, for Usman. Obviously, Usman is hungry for Masvidal, but is there any other Mm -hmm. fight that makes sense? Like, you said Covington uh, or Masvidal, or is there somebody else? Or is it just them two? I don't know. Um, I think the fight that makes the most sense is probably Covington because Covington is he's been busting his ass and he's been winning some fights and he seems like he's earned another title shot. I mean, the only other person he could face is the number f- five guy, which I think he hasn't fought against. I can't think. Let me look up the rankings. I um. But yeah, I mean, to me, I think the Covington fight makes the most sense. Did you hear what happened to his foot? So he has to go on like a medical suspension for a couple of months. Usman's foot is like messed really? up. Yeah. Well, I mean, he was he. Well, also against that Masvidal fight, he had a broken nose coming into that fight. Yeah, he faces potential six month term for right foot. Yeah, sometimes they uh from training, you know, they come in with like micro fractures and shit. They they're they come up a little banged up from training and you know, they just have to suck it up because I mean, you signed up for the fight, you want to get paid. Yeah, so Coving Oh, okay, yeah. go ahead. Go, go ahead. Tell me about the the schedule that you I was going to say so Co- Covington um just bumped up to number 1. Burns went down to 2. Leon Edwards, just another guy he beat. Um so he could face Stephen Thompson. I I believe he hasn't fought him yet. But I don't think he's going to get a shot. And then, obviously, he took the belt from Tyron Woodley. Because Tyron Woodley, man, he has just fell off hard. Because I think well, I he know. just he just lost he just lost to Covington, I believe. Um, yes, he did. Yeah, he just lost to Covington. Yeah, he's on a three fight. Well, he lost to Usman, then he lost to Burns, and now he just lost to Covington. Like fucking Tyron Woodley's. Just dropping down, dude. I remember him coming in and just being a fucking monster. Because him and Usman are the same, where they're just like fucking tanks, dude. Like five percent body fat, just like fucking yoked out of their mind. So I'm looking now at the schedule. The next uh, UFC 259 is going to be March 6th, and the two fights that we kind of talked about before was Adesanya and Black Twits. Was the main event, and then the co-main event is Amanda Nunes, Megan Anderson. So I think those are two. You know, two premier fights to look out for in the next one. I mean, there's some other UFC, like UFC fight nights that are coming up. Honestly, this um, fight night right here, Curtis Blades and um, Lewis, that's not a that's not a bad fight. Yeah, Lewis is funny as fuck, bro. He's the, one of the funniest motherfuckers on the mic. He just says some wild shit when he's in there. Yeah, I don't want to see him talk. <laughs> when, yeah, that, when he wins or loses, I don't want to hear him talk. Yeah, no, that's... Okay. So under this Usman um, article, there's <laughs> two comments on here. <laughs> and it, so it's, it's about his like fracture or whatever's going on with his foot. Yeah. And somebody wrote, it be all that damn foot stomping. <laughs> <That's> For real. <laughs> that's all he does, man. 
It's just so boring. And that's the thing with him him going against Masvidal. So hopefully it's Covington. But that's the thing. Masvidal is not a great wrestler. And Usman went to college. He was a college wrestler. So that his strength is on the ground or, you know, grappling up. While and he's Masvidal's just got a size. Fighter. So if, 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 you know, if we get to that fight, which I think we will after this Covington fight, if, you know, if they, once they schedule it or whatever, um, that's going to be the thing to see. Is Usman going to stand up? If he's, if he's going to want to stand up or go to his strength, which is on the ground. So. Um, but we'll see what they schedule. I'm, I'm sure, you know, we'll we'll see Masvidal again. I don't know, by the end of this year, we'll, we'll see. I don't oh, know he's that. fighting again, probably in the summer, if I had to guess. I'm also da- I'm also super pumped for the net the pay-per-view 260, uh, Sipe and uh, Francis Ngannou. Like, that's going to be one hell of a fight. I'm so down for that one. Oh, man. Yeah, that's so gonna this is going to be happening, I guess, the next UFC is in March 6th. That one's March 27th. So, you know, next month is going to be... Uh, action pack with UFC. Oh, so this weekend is Curtis Blades and Derek Lewis. Yeah. All right. We'll see. I'll, I'll see the post game. I just, like I said, I think Lewis is pretty, he's a funny dude, man. If you see his, he'd be saying some wild shit. Yeah, I think I, he was talking about, he was, um, then he, he was the one that was like, man, my balls is hot or something. Yeah. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> he, he was like in the post fight uh, interview and he was yeah. like, man, my balls is hot. Like, <laughs> Really they asked him, he's like, oh, what are you going to do now? He's like, I'm going to go home and have sex with my wife or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> some shit like that. He, he's the I'm underdog. Gonna go a I'm going to go eat a bucket of chicken and have sex with my wife. Or he says some shit like that, like some wild shit. He'd be like, okay, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah, I love guys like that. That's just so fucking funny. Like, it adds so much to it. <laughs> like, he's what? the underdog in that fight. Yeah, actually, the. Oh, he's kind of fav- slow. He's kind of slow. Uh, yeah. He's strong as fuck. He's a big ass dude. Don't get me wrong, but and Curtis Blades has been on fire. 